So after we talk about the simplest type of low angle green boundaries, let's consider the energy aspect of green boundary versus misorientation. We say green boundary has free energy, especially has excess free energy, gamma B, compared when when the crystal is perfect, when there is no green boundary. And this gamma B, this free energy associated with green boundary or excess free energy depends on misorientation or tilt angle. Okay, theta. When that angle is very, very small, when the tilt angle is very small, how small? Smaller than around 10 to 15 degree. The almost all of the misfit, misfit of atoms is only occurring at uh, the dislocation core, at the center of that linear one dimensional defect, which we call dislocation. Then the gamma B, the, sur the interfacial energy, in this case, green boundary energy, the excess energy would be the summation of the total energy from dislocation per unit area, okay? per unit area, which means the green boundary energy is only coming from all the uh, energy associated with that pile, that array of dislocation. And in that case, the green boundary energy would be proportional to 1 over D, or the inverse of the inter-dislocation distance. Remember we just mentioned D, capital D here is not for diffusion coefficient. It is for the distance between neighboring dislocation in this low angle tilt boundary. So 1 over D just tell us how frequent would we meet a dislocation. And from previous discussion, we would see that 1 over D would be proportional to theta, the tilt angle over Burgess vector. Or put another way, theta would be proportional to B, Burgess vector divided by D, or 1 over capital D would be the same as theta over Burgess vector. So based on this relationship, we would have the conclusion or implication that the green boundary energy for this low angle tilt boundary would be proportional. Proportional to what? Proportional to the theta, which is the tilt angle <coughs> between neighboring grains. And the larger that tilt angle, <coughs> the larger this green boundary um, energy. And for a given system, the Burgers vector, the dislocation Burgers vector is often the a constant. When the tilt angle is larger than 10 to 15 degree, what people observed is that the arrangement of atoms in along the green boundary is messed up so much that now we have a relative open structure along the green boundary and we would have per fit between the two green along the green boundary. And in that case, the green boundary energy would uh, remain relatively constant. It doesn't matter how further that uh, the misorientation or the misalignment ang angle is larger than 10 to 15. It goes larger or smaller. It's more or less what we call a constant because it's already messed up so much that it doesn't matter more. Okay. And in those cases, people find that the green boundary energy is typically approaching a constant value, which is about one third of gamma I3. Again, gamma B means the green boundary energy, and for this high angle, higher than 10 to 15 degree, the green boundary energy is approaching a constant, which is about one third of gamma I3, which is essentially the surface energy. As for solid, V for vapor, the surface gamma for surface energy between solid and vapor, essentially the surface energy. Okay, and if if we are going to plot gamma B versus theta, if we plot gamma B, the green boundary energy versus misorientation 
angle for these types of tilt boundary, we will start from zero, which means when they have perfect alignment, the green boundary energy is zero, and start linearly initially, and then gradually reaching a plateau. Okay, and this transition between linear increase and plateau is occurring at roughly around 10 to 15 degree. Okay, which means when the two greens has a, a misorientation of less than this one, if the boundary is tilt, then the green boundary energy increased linearly with misorientation. Beyond that, it's quickly approaching a constant value, which we say said it was about one third of the surface energy. Okay, for the material. And this table lists the example of green boundary energy um, for different metals at uh, a different uh, temperatures. And you see that the green boundary energy versus the surface energy is approaching from around 0 0.25 to 0 0.4, which is roughly one third of the surface energy. Of course, here we are talking about the high angle tilt to the boundary, which is the plateau value for all these four different metals with very dramatically different uh, uh, at very dramatically different temperature. Okay.